an unabridged recording of Silva Ultramind's Intuitive Guidance System for Business by Jose Silva, Jr. and Catherine Watson with Ed Burned, Jr. Narrated by Sean Pratt This program contains mental exercises that require your eyes to be closed for complete relaxation. Do not listen to this program while driving, operating equipment, or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Forward by Chris Downs Statistically, I had no hope of achieving anything. Yet, I have had a very successful life. I had a very successful 30-year career in the British police service. I've had a long and loving marriage and family life, too. How did that happen to a person who was born into a poor community in the north of England 69 years ago, whose father died when he was three, and who left school at age 15 with no qualifications? How did I become a senior officer in the British police service? How did I achieve a master's degree in education? How did I become an accredited training evaluator in the government department responsible for policing in Great Britain? You're about to hear the answer to these and many other questions. I was one of the naturals, one of the 10% of humanity who somehow grew up retaining the ability to use effective sensory projection, ESP, naturally. This is not just another audiobook to listen to. I consider this the most advanced training program for anyone who wants to be the best in their chosen field. It will show you exactly how to develop the ability that only one person in ten develops naturally, which is the ability to detect information with your mind, to make better decisions, and to attract good luck and beneficial coincidences. My life has been full of what I thought were coincidences. I had a wonderful thirty years in law enforcement. I was very successful. And I now realize I was definitely guided I always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. I was always a very good interviewer. I knew exactly what questions to ask. They just came to mind, as though the person I was interviewing were telling me what to ask. I have lots of stories, funny and sad, I could share with you. Just last year, another coincidence guided me to the work of Jose Silva and his Ultramind ESP system, and I could see why my life turned out so well. More importantly, I realize that everyone who learns this simple system can have just as great a life and even better. Without any formal education, Jose Silva built a multi-million dollar business. Then, he had great success as a scientific researcher. He also became a superb educator who seemed to know instinctively the right things to do. The preconditioning modules in the Silva Ultramind ESP system are a brilliant method of leading the learner into the exercises. In training evaluation terms, they are the lesson plan for achieving the objectives of the learning, but are expressed in a dynamic method to match the whole ethos of the course. I'm really impressed. The idea surely must have come from a higher source. If you're listening to this, I am sure that you too have been guided to it. Ask yourself, why did I choose this specific book of all the books available? When you follow the training process, and most importantly, the key underlying principles, be ready for an amazing journey to the top. Chris Downs, M.E.D., was a training evaluator and senior officer for the British Police Service from 1971 to 2001. Preface The Life of Jose Silva Jose Silva's life is more than a great American success story. It has transcended time and space to become one of the world's all-time great success stories. Jose Silva was born in Laredo, Texas in 1914. When he was just four years old, his father died as the result of a terrorist act during the Mexican Revolution. He started his first business at the age of six, when he began working and earning an income to help support the family, which included his sister and two younger brothers. Since his income was necessary for the family, Jose never had the opportunity to attend school. With the help of his sister and brothers, he learned to read and write in both the Spanish 
and the English languages. He recalled that he was always very lucky at finding new business ventures that would help more people and earn him more money. He cleaned offices, ran errands, and eventually began traveling 150 miles to San Antonio to buy household goods that he then sold door-to-door -door in Laredo. By the time he was a teenager, he was employing other youngsters to go door-to-door -door and sell the merchandise. Many of the youngsters were earning more than their fathers, and young Jose was earning more than all of them. That's how he had enough money to pay for a correspondence course in radio repair in 1928, when he was 14 years old. The timing was perfect. He got in on the ground floor of that new field, and that's how he earned his millions when he grew his electronics repair business to be one of the largest in South Texas. He still had his knack for spotting new business opportunities. He recalled one time when he pointed out a vacant lot to his wife Paula and said it would be a great spot for an ice cream stand. He didn't act on that impulse because he had other interests. But a few months later, somebody opened an ice cream shop there. Jose used his knowledge of electronics repair to start a new business repairing coin-operated music machines, jukeboxes, and leasing them to establishments throughout South Texas. In 1944, Jose was drafted into the Army to serve during World War II. Not knowing whether he would survive the war, he closed his business and set the money aside for his family. It was during the Army induction process that Jose had his first encounter with a psychiatrist. This led him to the study of psychology. He dived into the study of psychology with the same enthusiasm he always had because he wanted to see if he could learn ways to help his children to be as successful as he was. He observed that only a few people had the kind of instincts and good luck that he had. After his discharge from the Army at the end of the war, Jose returned to Laredo and started his radio repair business all over again. This was an exciting and busy time for him. He was assigned to build a radio technician's training department at Laredo Junior College and ran the department for more than six years. The department was named the best in the state of Texas by the Veterans Administration. This was quite an achievement for someone who had never attended school as a student. When commercial television came on the scene, Jose began to learn all about it, and his business continued to grow rapidly. His study of psychology had led him to several related fields, including hypnosis, parapsychology, and electroencephalography, leading to psychorientology, a new science of how to orient or direct your mind, that is your psyche, for greater success. After six years, he was so busy with his business and his research that he had to resign his position at the college. By 1966, the research had progressed so far that Silva was in demand to speak at colleges and universities about his work in psychorientology, and people throughout Texas were asking him to teach them his mind development techniques. He had learned that the most successful people used their minds differently than the average person. Other people might work just as hard and have just as much knowledge, but if they didn't do their thinking at the alpha brainwave level, then they weren't as successful as the 10% of people who did their thinking at that level. The results of the research were tested at the University of Texas Medical Center and at Trinity University, both located in San Antonio. He showed the researchers that his students could do what scientists believed was impossible, activate the mind and function deductively while at the alpha brainwave level. The results were so impressive that they were published in a scientific journal in England in 1972. The scientists wanted to conduct more research with Mr. Silva, but school officials killed that idea when they learned that he didn't have any formal education. He held no academic degrees, but received the kind of degree that you cannot get by taking tests in a classroom. The Doctor of Humanities degree for his life's work, which is the truest test of greatness. He always had great respect for education and wished he had been able to attend school, but someone once pointed out to him that, every year, a lot of students parade across the stage and accept the PhDs they received for what they had learned, but only a few people receive an honorary doctorate for what they have actually accomplished. He had the kind of education and experiences that no other scientist had. His study of psychology taught him about human behavior. His experiences with hypnosis showed him what the human mind is capable of doing. The electroencephalograph, 
the EEG, gave him the ability to see what was going on inside a person's head and relate brain activity to mental function. In addition, he was a classically trained singer. His knowledge of music, frequencies, and harmonics revealed to him that scientists needed to rethink the way they had been classifying the brain frequency spectrum. Through the years, he met many ultra-successful people. One of them was W. Clement Stone, author with Napoleon Hill of Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. It was more than just positive thoughts and mental images that enabled Stone to earn millions of dollars in the insurance business. I could tell that Mr. Stone was also a natural alpha thinker, just like I am, Mr. Silva explained. Positive thoughts and mental images of what you want to achieve have a small effect when you are functioning at the beta brainwave level, but they have a very big impact when you are able to do your thinking at the alpha level. Only one person in ten learns naturally how to do their thinking at ten cycles per second, or CPS, which is the alpha brain frequency. The good news is that Jose Silva developed a system to help everyone learn to function at 10 CPS, just as the top 10% do. He began teaching his system to the public in 1966, after spending half a million dollars of his own money to conduct 22 years of scientific research. In 1969, the demand for his services was so great that he began training other people to teach his system. To date, millions of people in more than 100 countries around the world have benefited from his research. He always offered a no-questions-asked money-back guarantee of satisfaction, and fewer than 1% ask for a refund. The boy who was taught how to read and write by his siblings became a successful and sought-after author himself, authoring more than a dozen books. The first, titled The Silva Mind Control Method, published in English by Simon & Schuster, and eventually in more than a dozen other languages, has sold well over a million copies worldwide and is still going strong 40 years after its first publication, making Jose Silva Laredo's most successful author. The young boy who used to shine shoes for a living is the undisputed leader in the field of mind development in ESP. His system is the first to guide you to function at the alpha brainwave level, to use the right brain hemisphere to think with, and to develop and use intuition through ESP. Mr. Silva's philosophy has always been to gain while helping others to gain, not to gain at others' loss. This master of teaching people about success also cautions people to keep things in perspective, saying, Do not let the first failure destroy you, nor let success ruin you. With the worldwide success of his system, Mr. Silva is known by more people around the world than anyone else who ever walked the streets of Laredo. He did not let success ruin him. He lived modestly, and his favorite pastime right up until his passing in 1999 was lecturing and helping other people awaken the genius that is within them. This young boy, who started helping people one shoe at a time, went on to help millions, not just to look better on the outside, but to actually be better on the inside. Prior to his passing, he developed a new course, the Silva Ultramind ESP System. It is more than a course. It is a system. In addition to helping people develop and use their own God-given intuition, the Ultramind ESP system includes a new scientifically-based technique to communicate with higher intelligence regularly and reliably. This will enable you to obtain help and guidance in carrying out your mission in life. While Mr. Silva may have moved on to new assignments, his work is still going strong both in live seminars and in convenient home study courses. Jose Silva is a glowing example of what people can achieve by using their natural, God-given intuition to make the right decisions and by concentrating on providing value to others, so that when they move on, they will have left behind a better world for those who follow. Introduction What This Book Is About Business people at all levels, from solo workers and entrepreneurs to department heads and top executives, require many skills. 
Perhaps the most important is the ability to make good decisions in all aspects of creating and managing a profitable business. Good decisions lead to company profits and career advancement. The ability to sense people's inner thoughts and needs helps you say and do the right things to build a strong team that will quickly reach its goals and achieve great success. Your intuition provides you with an additional source of information so that you will do the right thing at the right time and be ready when opportunities present themselves. The good news is that now, thanks to the 22 years of scientific research by Jose Silva, we can help you succeed by teaching you how to use your natural, God-given intuition regularly and reliably so that you will be right more times than wrong. Knowing the future helps you prepare for it. When you know what the future holds, you will be prepared to deal with problems and take advantages of opportunities. The benefits of this are obvious, but can it really be done? Professor John Mihalaski, Professor Emeritus of Industrial Engineering at the Newark College of Engineering, now the New Jersey Institute of Technology, conducted ten years of scientific research to find out. In experiments he performed with company CEOs, he observed that the CEOs who performed best in tests of precognitive ability also tended to be the ones with the best success rates at running their business, measured in terms of five-year profitability growth. Professor Mihalaski's experiment results are summarized this way. The CEOs with the greatest profitability increases of 100% or more also had the greatest number of correct guesses in intuition tests. 81.5% of them performed above chance results. On the other end, none of the CEOs with the poorest results scored above chance in the precognition test. Of CEOs with mediocre numbers, the results were consistent with statistical chance results. Professor Mihalaski will tell you even more about what he learned in this project in Appendix A. Even better, in this book we will guide you step by step to develop the ability to function the way the most successful executives do. Successful People Attract Good Luck Have you ever wondered why some people seem to make the correct decisions far more frequently than the average person? It's because they use more of their mind and use it in a special manner. That is what you will learn to do in this book. Early Adopters Reap the Benefits now is the perfect time for you to learn this new technology of the mind. With all new technology, the early adopters reap immediate benefits and gain big advantages before the establishment catches on and catches up. It happened with the printing press, which made mass communications over great distances possible. People living in the American colonies exchanged information in booklets and newspapers and joined to create a new country. It happened again with commercial television, when huge numbers of people could influence and be influenced by events and brought down a U.S. president and ended the Vietnam War. We saw it happen just a few years ago in the Arab Spring, when the early adopters used the power of the Internet to change the way they are governed. The computer, the Internet, and the smartphone have changed the way that all of us do business and communicate with one another. Now, humanity is poised to move beyond physical technology. We can use the human mind to go places where nothing else can go, to communicate in ways in which no other media in history have ever been able to communicate, and to solve insolvable problems and make impossible dreams come true. We call it the science of tomorrow, today, and those who adopt it first will benefit the most. Who will benefit? Business owners, executives at all levels, managers, and supervisors will all learn valuable ways to use ESP to manage more effectively and make better decisions. If you're an entrepreneur, an independent contractor, a home worker, an internet marketer, or someone who sells goods on an online marketplace or auction site, you will benefit from enhanced creativity and decision-making. If you're looking for a new job or if you desire to enter the business world, you will benefit from these techniques. If you have struggled for years trying to rise above average and fulfill the potential you know you have, the answer is in your hands. Unleash your superpowers by learning to use your mind the way the ultra-successful people do. If you are part of a family business, 
we don't need to tell you about some of the special challenges you face. In addition to business relationships, you also have family relationships that can affect the success of the business. Perhaps your job is managing a household and a family. That can be the toughest job of all. These techniques will help you to manage your family relations better and keep things running smoothly. Testimonials and Case Studies No matter what your age or where in the world you live or how far along you are in your career, or whether you've had good fortune or bad, you can use your own natural, God-given intuition to help you in your business and personal life. In Chapter 1, business owner Klemen Mihalic in Slovenia explains how he used the silver ultramine techniques to help his family, his friends, and his business. He even came up with a solution to end the rape of women in refugee camps in Darfur, in the Sudan, that won praise from the humanitarian aid coordinator there. A young man from Maryland, fresh out of college, used the Silva techniques to solve a difficult problem, and this one success helped get him out of a job that wasn't right for him and into the right career. You'll meet him in Chapter 2. A California lady named Mona struggled for 23 years selling real estate with modest success. Soon after she started applying the techniques she learned in the Silva Ultramind ESP systems, she doubled her results and quadrupled her confidence. She will tell you about it in Chapter 5. A retired executive who spent most of his career in the public sector in the United Kingdom discovered that it is much easier to make big-ticket spending decisions when you have reliable ESP in your toolkit. He explains what he did in Chapter 6. A lady in Bulgaria tells how she used subjective communication to get what she was rightfully entitled to, despite the attempts of some unscrupulous people who tried to swindle her. You will learn what she did in Chapter 9. Entrepreneur Victor Covens, who owns his own one-man travel agency, recounts how he obtained worldwide publicity and recognition as tops in his field for his business without hiring publicity agents or a public relations agency. You will meet him in Chapter 11. Ed Burned Jr. will tell you, also in Chapter 11, about negotiating his first published agreement with Jose Silva and how the words that he actually said to Mr. Silva were far superior than the words he had intended to say. How to Develop Your Intuitive Powers Now, thanks to the groundbreaking research by Mr. Silva, learning to use your own natural intuition is as easy as one, two, three. One. Learn to function at the powerful alpha brainwave level with a relaxing, refreshing, silva centering exercise. 2. Unlock 100% of your intuitive powers with five simple mental projection drills. And 3. Use your powers in ways that benefit both you and your customers. Now, for the first time, we are going to open the vaults, go behind the scenes, and show you the science of how and why Jose Silva's world-famous mind-training systems work. Better still, you will learn exactly how and when to apply this science in your own life and gain benefits you never imagined possible. Would you like to learn how to... Would you like to learn how to do the following? Program yourself to do the right thing at the right time to take advantage of opportunities and increase profits and income? Accurately forecast business trends to keep you ahead of the competition. Use your intuition to help sense what other people's real wants and needs are. Say the right thing at the right time when negotiating, managing subordinates, or reporting to superiors and shareholders. Learn mental techniques to establish immediate rapport with coworkers, as well as with customers, clients, suppliers, and other people you deal with. As long as you are being honest, you can create an instant connection with people so they know they can believe you and trust you. Would you like to learn how to use feedback in the physical world so that you know exactly what to do to achieve the success you desire? Determine if the time is right to make a career move. Detect industry trends before they become public. Become aware of potential problems before they hurt you. Program people who owe you money or who are trying to cheat you so that they develop a strong urge to do the right thing and pay you what they owe you? Program your work environment for success. Influence others from a distance, even when you cannot be with them in person. 
mentally sense the right thing to say and do in order to produce the best outcome for your clients and your business. Detect hidden information that will give you a competitive advantage by enabling you to serve your clients better. Trust your judgment and your decisions and doubt and second-guessing by asking higher intelligence to confirm or correct your decisions. Know when to seek a raise, a promotion, a better job. Intuitively sense the true motivations and feelings of others and avoid the pain of being betrayed and disappointed. And finally, would you like to learn how to let higher intelligence guide you to your right path in life for greater success, happiness, and satisfaction? Find your right work and your mission in life? What You Must Do to Succeed When you follow the simple step-by-step -step guidance in this book, you will find the powerful alpha brainwave level. You will also learn to activate your mind while remaining at alpha in order to make better decisions and solve more problems. Just a few hours of relaxing and refreshing practice with Jose Silva's world-famous centering exercise is all it takes. Then, relax at the alpha level and go through each of the five mental projection exercises to become familiar with the subjective or mental dimension. You'll establish points of reference that you can use to solve problems and achieve positive outcomes that bring you success and satisfaction by improving living conditions on planet Earth. After that, you need to continue to use your learned techniques. Just a few minutes a day will keep you mentally sharp so that you will be a superior problem solver. A word of caution. If you plan to use these abilities to take advantage of people, to gain benefits for yourself at their loss, then save your time and look elsewhere. Karma really works. The Creator does not favor one person over another and will not help you if you want to gain at someone else's loss. If you want to gain while helping the other person also gain, then these techniques will work for you. And higher intelligence will help you when you get stuck and need guidance and help. Practical Techniques You Can Start Using Today 1. Your Career Do you want a better job? A raise? Something more meaningful, interesting, and satisfying to do? How about having your own business? More customers? Bigger sales? Better employees? Better working conditions? 2. Smart Buying Use remote viewing to find the best product or service, the best vendor to establish a relationship with. Then, use remote influencing to help establish a relationship that will be mutually beneficial for years to come. 3. Effective Selling would it help you to be able to mentally detect what your prospects' real wants and needs are? To read their thoughts, so to speak? Would it help you to be able to put a thought into your prospect's mind? You can use remote viewing and remote influencing to reach them at a deep inner level, where they know you are telling them the truth, that what you are offering them really is in their best interest. Neutralizing Negativity in Your Prospect's Mind Neutralize negative generators who are trying to sabotage the sale for their own selfish reasons. And four, taking action. You can learn to use remote viewing to see what a person wants, and then use remote influencing to motivate them to go ahead and take action, to do what is right, to close the sale, to sign the agreement, to provide the information they've promised you, to pay a debt they owe you. Earn your master's in business intuition. People spend a lot of money and a lot of time in class to earn an MBA, a master's degree in business administration. Just as valuable, perhaps even more, is an MBI, a master of business intuition. The Silva Ultramind ESP system is like getting a degree in how to use intuition to detect information and solve problems. In the first chapter of this book, you will start learning how to use more of your mind and to use it in a special manner. Claim your rewards. All forms of success, bonuses and raises and promotions and recognition and honors, come to those who are prepared and take action at the right moment in time. 
In just a few weeks, you can equip yourself with the same skills and talents as the ultra-successful people in all walks of life, so that you can achieve the success that you have always known, deep within, that you are meant to have. When you're ready to begin, just listen to Chapter 1 and follow the simple instructions. To contact us for help and support, please write down the contact information we'll share in Appendix B. Meet the Authors Jose Silva, Jr. was the first of Jose and Paula Silva's ten children. He was there when his father began the scientific research that unlocked the secret of developing intuition and using it regularly and reliably in all aspects of your life. Nobody is more qualified than Joe, Jr. to teach you how to apply his father's research findings to your business career. Joe was not a research subject. Joe documented the research, recording the sessions with an old Robert's reel-to-reel tape recorder, and fighting the data that his father was acquiring. While his younger sisters and brothers were sitting with their eyes closed, following their father's instructions, Joe was learning the best ways of helping the average person to develop mental powers that few people have. When Mr. Silva realized that he needed to establish a business to propagate his findings, he called on Joe to help manage the new business, something Joe continues to do today. Twenty-five years later, when Mr. Silva started the new Silva Ultramind Systems business at the age of 84, he put Joe in charge. Catherine Watson came to work for Jose Silva in 1990, shortly after graduating from high school. She learned the business and how to use the Silva techniques in business from the ground up. She started by taking orders, working in the mailroom, and running the shipping department. After a few years, she moved to Austin, Texas, and went to work in the state government bureaucracy. While working for the state, she started her own silver business, Avlis Productions, Inc., and soon grew it into a full-time company, with representatives in many countries around the world. By the way, if you are wondering where the name Avlis came from, just spell it backwards. In addition to managing the business, she is also a full-time mother to her young daughter, Lily. Ed Burned, Jr. is another member of the Silva team. Ed grew up in the newspaper business. His motto was, Don't believe anything that you hear and only half of what you see. To say that he was cynical about the reality of ESP would be an understatement. When I actually experienced it for myself and could produce ESP repeatedly, then I couldn't deny it anymore, he admitted. When I realized how valuable this ability is for individuals, and how much better life would be on this planet if everybody could use their intuition to get whatever they need without taking from anybody else, without hurting anyone, then I had to get involved. When we reach that point, there will be no more need for crime, no more wars, and life will be good for everyone. In 1977, Ed attended Silva instructor training to learn more, then began teaching the course. In 1981, he was offered a job at Jose Silva's Laredo headquarters. I couldn't pass up an opportunity like that, he said, and I have been here ever since. Ed recalls, Joe was among the first to welcome me. Around here, he told me, we don't think of you as an employee. We treat you like family. Part 1. How to Use More of Your Brain and Mind the way ultra-successful people do. Chapter 1. A New Way of Living Welcome to the beginning of the second phase of human evolution on the planet. Humans are beginning to use their minds in ways never imagined before. In our highly connected world of mobile devices and social media and rapid change, it's essential that you not only keep up, but that you stay a step ahead of the competition. If you are the first to know what is being planned before the plans are put into action, then you can be prepared for it. You will be able to stop bad things from happening and make good things happen. Just as the personal computer, the internet, social media, and the smartphone have revolutionized the way we communicate physically, you are now going to learn to use your mind to communicate subjectively. This will take you to places that you could never go before and will allow you to communicate in ways that go beyond the wildest fantasies of science fiction. This is now a reality, thanks to a scientific breakthrough that solved a mystery, 
which was, What gives the ultra-successful people the ability to see what ordinary people don't see, and do what ordinary people don't do? There are no limits to this new means of communication. Your mind is not physical, so physical barriers cannot stop it. If somebody is plotting against you, nothing can stop your mind from detecting it. All it takes to access this new, unlimited means of communications is a computer that you already own. It is the most powerful computer in the world, a portable computer that you carry around in your head, your own brain. Learning how to use this communication system is as easy as learning how to use a smartphone. Navigate to the application you need, then learn how to work with it. In this book, you will learn how to use your mind to detect information and solve problems. You already know how to use your physical senses, such as eyesight and hearing, to detect information, and how to use your physical body to correct problems. But 90% of us grew up without knowing how to use the mind that way. Back in 1944, Jose Silva wanted to know more about how the brain and mind worked so that he could help his children do better in school and be more successful in life. The research that he conducted over the next 22 years led to what has been called the greatest breakthrough of all time in the field of mind science. How Your Brain Works Your brain operates on a small amount of electricity, just like a computer. It can process and store information, retrieve that information, and use it to make decisions and solve problems. The electrical energy of your brain pulsates or vibrates at various frequencies. Each frequency is associated with a specific part of your brain that is designed for a specific task. They are 1. Beta. More than 14 CPS, typically 20, occurs when your body and mind are active and you focus your eyes. 2. Alpha. 7 to 14 CPS, is associated with light sleep and dreaming. 3. Theta, from 4 to 7 CPS, is associated with deeper sleep and with the use of hypnosis for such things as painless surgery. And finally, 4. Delta, below 4 CPS, is associated with deepest sleep. Jose Silva's professional background was in electronics, and this gave him insights that other researchers didn't have. First, he reasoned that the best range to use for mental activity would be the range that has the least impedance and the most energy. Of the four frequencies, the alpha frequency has the strongest current and is the most rhythmic. That's why it was the first to be discovered by scientists in the 1920s using a sensing device called the electroencephalograph, or EEG, which measures electrical energy in the brain. The scientists named this frequency alpha after the first letter in the Greek alphabet. If it was actually possible to actively use one's mind to analyze problems and come up with solutions while in the alpha state, it seemed logical to Jose Silva that this state would be the ideal one in which to think. Why would the alpha level be ideal? Three reasons. One, it would allow one to think more clearly because of its extra energy. Two, it would enable one to maintain concentration better. And three, alpha is in the absolute center of the brain's normal operating range, so it would allow access to more information more easily. But there was a catch. Research revealed that most people do their thinking at the beta frequency. Jose's research led him to discover that only 10% of the population are natural alpha thinkers. It turned out that he himself was one of them. Most people, approximately 90%, are only able to use the weakest, least stable frequency to do their thinking, the beta level. Most people, when their brain frequency slows to alpha, enter the subconscious state, then fall asleep. But the superstars stay awake at the alpha level and do their thinking at alpha. These natural alpha thinkers have learned to use their intuition, to trust their hunches, and this guides them to far greater success than the average person. The good news is that you have the same kind of biocomputer that they have. All that you need is instruction on how to access the alpha level. 
and then activate your subjective communication faculty with a few simple exercises to provide points of reference and orientate you. Jose Silva had studied psychology and hypnosis while seeking ways to help his children. Once he obtained an EEG and actually saw how the brain functioned, he was able to combine his knowledge of all of those topics to develop a system that everybody can use to learn to function the way ultra-successful people do. In this book, we will guide you step-by-step step to activate and begin using your natural, God-given intuition like ultra-successful people. People like Klemen Mihalic, who owns a pre-press business in Slovenia, prospering during a worldwide recession. Do you remember the financial meltdown in late 2008 that led to a worldwide recession? Klemen Mihalic, who was just learning the Silva Ultramind ESP system, used his intuition so effectively that his business grew 90% in 2009 and has continued to grow ever since. Clement had taken the old Silva Mind Control course that was first introduced in the 1960s. It included many problem-solving techniques to help people overcome insomnia, relieve tension and migraine headaches, improve memory and concentration, stop smoking and overeating, and more. Those techniques were included in order to attract people to the class so that they would then have an opportunity to learn the most valuable skill of all, developing and learning to use their own natural psychic abilities. But there wasn't enough time left at the end of the course to teach people all the ways that ESP could help them in their business and personal lives. So, most people thought the course was about the problem-solving formulas. The course accomplished its main goal. Millions of people in more than 100 countries around the world learned for themselves that ESP is real. Once people accepted the reality of ESP, Jose Silva created the course he had always wanted to teach. The Silva Ultramind ESP System. Clement contacted us shortly after we launched the Silva Ultramind ESP System and wanted to teach the course in Slovenia, where he lives. He'd had a lot of success with self-programming and with using the alpha brainwave level to analyze business problems and select the best solution. He wanted to teach those techniques, but he told us that he didn't think the people of Slovenia were ready for an ESP course. We disagreed and explained some of the many ways that he could use ESP to help himself and his family in ways that went far beyond just relieving headaches and improving memory. He liked what he heard, so he agreed to give it a try and see what kind of results he got. One of his first successes with the new techniques involved a problem he encountered about the construction of a new house. He used some alpha thinking and intuition to solve the problem. We had problems with our seller investor who did not build the house as we both agreed at the beginning, Clement explained. There were too many mistakes. First, he tried to correct the problem on his own by entering his level and picturing all of the mistakes corrected and the seller giving him some money to compensate him for the deficiencies. As I look back now, he said, I realized that I really wanted too much money. So I went to level and told the seller mentally about mistakes and delays. And at my level, he told me a few things that I had not considered. That is why I lowered my requests to him. At my level, we both agreed with some corrections on the building, and we also agreed to a discount of $15,500. What happened next when I met the guy was amazing. He offered to correct exactly what I had programmed to be corrected, and he also offered me a discount of exactly $15,500. I was speechless. Mental video solves two problems at once. Following that, Clemen had a series of big successes with the help of the new mental video technique, which you will learn in Chapter 6. He was working on several unrelated problems. He was expanding the building that housed his pre-press business and needed somebody to oversee the construction work. He was also trying to help a friend who had left a good job and taken another one that turned out to be a disaster. When my friend told me his sad story, I started asking other friends for help. My beta plan was to find him some other job as soon as possible. When Clement was unable to come up with a solution to either problem, even with the help of alpha thinking and his own ESP, 
he turned to the mental video to ask for help from higher intelligence. The next day, a series of coincidences left Clemen in a jam, unable to find anybody to help him complete a simple task. Things seemed to be getting worse instead of better. As I was driving along, he said, suddenly it came to me that I could hire my friend. As I thought about it, I realized that there was a lot of work he could do, including overseeing the construction work. His friend loved the idea, so Clemen hired him immediately. He also realized that once the construction was completed, his friend could do the graphic arts work that the printing company needed. Why did we fail to do the work so many times? Clemen wondered. As Mr. Silva said, all of those coincidences let us know that higher intelligence was guiding us to a solution that many people would benefit from. When the construction was completed, they began installation of a new state-of-the-art flexo-plate-making machine that they had ordered from Eastman Kodak Company. Nobody else in the area had this kind of capability, and they even had clients lined up from several neighboring countries. We fully started the production of flexo-plates, he said. We have bought very expensive new software to improve our quality. Kodak engineers were shocked when they saw our progress. We might be the first repro studio in the world with that kind of technology and knowledge, combined with the special software for FlexoPress. Actually, they were now learning from us, Clement continued, and making notes. There is always some Kodak master from Belgium, Great Britain, Israel, or other countries who want to come and see our progress. Strange. We are only a couple of Slovene enthusiasts doing great work. Then came the financial meltdown in October 2008 and the worldwide recession the following year. While most businesses suffered and many shut down, Clemen used his new communications tools, ESP and the mental video, to find opportunities where he and his customers would both benefit. We had enough customers, Clemen said, but because of the financial crisis, payments were being delayed more and more because my customers were having trouble collecting money from their customers. So he took it to the next level and began finding ways to use ESP and help from higher intelligence to help his customers' customers. The result was a 90% growth in revenue in 2009 at the height of the recession. An inexpensive solution to a big problem. Clement had always worked to help people in need in Slovenia. What good is having money and the knowledge of how to get things done if you don't do some good with it? Clement asked. Doing good is good business. The satisfaction that you get when you help somebody lets you know that you are a success. Then, in the fall of 2009, something else caught his attention. The refugee crisis in Darfur, in the western Sudan. He was especially troubled when he learned that women were being raped every night in the refugee camps because there were not enough people to police the area and protect them. He used the mental video to ask for a solution, and the next day he found it on the Internet. Small, inexpensive, motion-activated, solar-powered video cameras. Once the cameras were installed, the rapes were drastically reduced because the perpetrators did not know when they were being recorded and feared they would be photographed and caught. The violence against the women ended immediately in a large area where the cameras were distributed. Suleiman Jamos, humanitarian coordinator in Darfur, said in an interview, I can tell you now that people in the refugee camps feel that Slovenia saved them more than EU and AU and the United Nations' 20,000 troops on the ground there. I think they are consuming money, millions and millions per day, and the effect they did was very minor to that effect made by these small cameras sent from Slovenia, brought by my friend Tomo Kriznar and his colleague, Clemen Mihalic, Suleiman continued. We didn't hear in the last two months about any kind of violations against women and children, thanks to these small cameras. They don't know where the camera is, and they are afraid to be caught, so everyone stopped. And this is known as the Slovenian gift. Clemen wasn't looking to get any benefits for himself, but he got a huge unexpected benefit as a result of this work. He met a lot of interesting people and did a lot of great networking. United Nations and NGO officials, government leaders, CEOs, celebrities, and actors. 
Now, Clement is working on even bigger plans. We are now working to deliver the mobile drilling machines, mounted on trucks, for Darfurians to find water resources, he said. We collected $200,000 to buy the machines, and we even persuaded Slovenian politicians to buy another one. Actress Mia Farrow, who is a UNICEF goodwill ambassador, has offered to help Clemens' Humanitarian Organization for People Around the Earth, known by the acronym H-O-P-E, HOPE, in the delivery of a drilling rig to Darfur. She explained, There is nothing more human than giving people access to drinking water. This is worth dying for. There was another crisis when Suleiman became critically ill and doctors thought he would die. Clemen and his graduates in Slovenia programmed for Suleiman for almost a year, and he amazed the doctors by recovering to good health. There are many, many more successes I could tell you about, Clemen said, but we can save those for another time. For more information about Clemen's work, please visit the HOPE website at hope.si. Develop your own subjective communication ability. Now that you have seen some of the value of intuition and of using your intuition to request and receive guidance and help from higher intelligence, let's get started with the first step. In the next chapter, you will learn how to find the alpha level and learn how to use it to solve problems and detect information. Chapter 2. How to Function Like a Genius in this chapter, you will learn to do something that only 10% of adults know how to do. Use the most powerful part of your brain to think, analyze information, and create solutions to life's toughest problems. In addition to being the most powerful part of the brain, where there is the least impedance to the flow of electrical energy and therefore of thoughts, it is also the area that some psychologists have labeled the subconscious. You are now going to learn how to use the subconscious Consciously. How Jose Silva discovered the alpha level. Jose Silva's field was electronics. So when he learned about a machine called the EEG, which could actually measure the electrical energy coming from the brain, he bought one. He might have been the only person in the world who was an expert in both hypnosis and electronics. This gave him the insight and ability to investigate what was happening to the brain physically while it was engaged in various mental activities, and to understand what was going on. He had also studied psychology, which gave him insight into human behavior. His study of music contributed, too, by helping him to understand frequencies and harmonics. It enabled him to comprehend the relationships of the various frequencies that come from different parts of the brain. Mr. Silva used to bring people into his laboratory, connect them to the EEG, and ask them questions. Most of the time, the people's brain frequency would remain at 20 cycles per second, beta, the whole time. But in some people, about 1 in 10, their brain frequency would lower to 10 cycles alpha while they thought about the question, and would then come back to 20 cycles beta when they answered him. He noticed that these people were more successful, healthier, and luckier than the 90% who remained at beta when they did their thinking. This made sense to him from an electronics point of view. If the alpha level is the stronger, he reasoned, it means it has the least impedance to the flow of electrical current. It is the most efficient circuit in the brain. At alpha, there are the fewest impediments to clear thinking. Therefore, it's the ideal frequency to use for thinking. Subsequent research bore out this hypothesis. He would bring children into the laboratory it is very easy to take children to the alpha level, and he would ask them questions. He might ask them how many ways they could think of to clean a car, for instance. They would tell him everything they could think of, wash it, vacuum it out, etc. Then he would take them to alpha and ask them again, and they would come up with additional ideas. Polish the hubcaps, clean the windows and the windshield wipers, and so on. These findings indicated that there is more information available to us at Alpha than there is at Beta. This could partially explain why the 10% of humanity who are Alpha thinkers are more successful than those who do their thinking at Beta. All of the ultra-successful people are natural Alpha thinkers. They have learned, through some natural means, to do their thinking at Alpha. 
but they don't realize that they think differently than 90% of humanity. When they write their books telling people how to achieve great success, only 10% of their readers can use those techniques successfully because they're the only ones who do their thinking at the alpha level. That's why those authors can always point to a few people who use their techniques successfully, while most of their readers get little benefit. Many self-improvement courses work the same way. The natural alpha thinkers are trying to teach their techniques to people who are unable to do their thinking at the alpha level. All of our techniques are designed to function at the alpha level. That's why it's so important to practice the Silva centering exercise, the long relaxation exercise, from time to time to maintain a good, deep alpha level. We will guide you through the Silva centering exercise in just a few minutes. Mr. Silva said this was his most important discovery, a way to use the subconscious consciously, thus converting it to an inner conscious level. There are many benefits from being able to do this. Benefits of Alpha Thinking Just like the alpha brainwave frequency, the alpha part of the brain is centrally located, and therefore it is closer to the information that has been impressed and stored on your brain neurons. When your mind is functioning at the alpha brainwave level, it has access to more information. It can process more information, and process it faster, and it can find solutions faster than is possible at the beta level. This makes alpha the ideal level for analysis and complex decision-making. The beta level is for action. If you've been having trouble making good decisions, now you know why. You have been doing it at beta the weakest, least stable, least synchronous part of the brain. Alpha also gives you access to subjective, mental information. You can detect information with your mind, your psyche, that is not available to your physical senses. This access to psychic information gives natural alpha thinkers a big advantage over ordinary people. Imagine using a part of your brain and mind that you have probably never used consciously in order to obtain information from other people's brains and to use their information and their experiences as if they were your own. Think about what that means. When you can access other people's experiences and results, you can learn from their experiences. You can learn from their mistakes and learn what worked well for them so that you can avoid making the same mistakes and can do it right the first time. There is still more. Imagine receiving information and guidance and help from a higher power. We call it higher intelligence. Other people call it God or Allah or Jehovah or the Almighty or many other names. This higher intelligence is vast enough and great enough to help everyone who is solving problems and making the world a better place to live. Imagine presenting your proposal and knowing that this higher power is working through you to help persuade people to follow your lead. More Benefits of Using the Alpha Level There are many more benefits of learning to use the subconscious consciously. Here are ten of them. 1. The Alpha Level leads to better health by strengthening your immune system, so it's like having free health insurance, the kind that protects you from developing health problems. 2. It is the strongest part of the brain, with the most synchronous and most stable brain frequency, so you can do a better job of analyzing information and making decisions. 3. You will be safer from accidents because your mind will automatically use ESP to detect oncoming danger and automatically guide you to the right action to avoid it. You'll learn how to develop your ESP in Chapter 3. 4. You will be luckier because your ESP will automatically make you aware of opportunities that 90% of people won't know about because they haven't learned to use the subconscious consciously. Five. You will be more persuasive because your mind will communicate directly with the people you are trying to persuade. 6. You will be fresher and more alert. 15 minutes of time at Alpha give you as much benefit as one hour of sleep. Look at what that means for the bottom line. Invest 20 minutes at Alpha and gain an additional 40 minutes of time at work or play or whatever you like. That is a pretty good return on investment, isn't it? 7. You can also use the alpha level to help you overcome bad habits, like drinking too much or drug addiction. 
You can also use the alpha level to start beneficial new habits that will help you achieve the business success you desire. 8. Alpha is the level for creativity. That you say you are a manager, not a creative person, so why do you need to develop your creative side? Here's why. When the solutions you are using aren't producing the results you need, you need new solutions. That's where your creative side comes in. The creative alpha level. Need more revenue? Use the alpha level to help you find a new service or product. Problems with an employee? Use the alpha level. Problems obtaining materials you need at a price that will allow you to make a profit? Then head to Alpha for creative solutions. 9. Alpha will help you to balance work and family in the midst of demanding job requirements. All work and no play can be bad for your health and productivity. So at Alpha, you might realize that you will benefit by learning to play better golf or improve your skill at any other activity. Research has shown that practicing a skill mentally at the alpha level brings almost as much improvement as practicing physically. And finally, 10. You can also use this inner conscious level to go back in time, subjectively, and rewrite your personal history. If you had bad experiences that affected your belief in your abilities to achieve greatness, you can neutralize those beliefs by impressing new ones at the same level, in the same part of the brain where those old childhood beliefs are stored. The first step is to find the alpha level and learn to function there with conscious awareness. This will allow you to use the subconscious consciously. In other words, you convert the subconscious into the inner conscious level. It all begins with alpha. First, you will learn to function at the alpha level with your eyes closed, because any time you attempt to use your physical eyesight, your brain will adjust to the beta brainwave frequency. Later in Chapter 8, we will teach you how to function with your eyes open and still get the full benefits of alpha functioning. First, though, we want you to learn to function at the alpha level with your eyes closed and verify that you are doing it. As a business person, you know how important it is to evaluate results and measure their impact on the bottom line. This is what leads to recognition, raises, bonuses, and promotions to higher and more responsible positions. It's easy to measure the results you achieve by using the alpha level. When you're able to solve problems that you couldn't solve at the beta level, then you know you are getting a good return on your investment. That is exactly what happened to a Silva graduate in Maryland. Here is his story. Stubborn problem yields quickly to alpha thinking. L. J. of Maryland discovered the power of alpha thinking shortly after starting his first job. I was right out of college, he recalled. I had taken the first engineering job that I could find. It involved troubleshooting control boards for a missile control system. He wasn't sure that he wanted to do this kind of work, and he didn't seem to be very well suited to it. One day a board came my way, and for the longest time I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, he said. I gave it my best shot. My emotions raised when I started to realize that this was not my calling. Then he remembered his silver training and decided to see if he could use the power of the alpha level to find the problem. I managed to relax enough to get to the alpha level and let the answer come to me as a mental picture. He used mental pictures to compare the circuit the way it was to the way it should be, and he noticed that one area stood out. I came out of level used my voltmeter, ohm meter, and indeed, the problem was there. That success had far-reaching consequences for LJ. This experience not only helped me keep my job, but led me to realize that I needed to find another position, which I did within the same company. I even ended up disclosing a patent in the new job. LJ benefited. So did his employer, and so did the person who was hired to fill the job that LJ didn't like after he moved into his new position within the company. Relaxation leads to Alpha. The Silva system is not book learning. It is subjective experiencing. It is just like learning any other skill. You must practice to develop expertise and gain the confidence that will let you excel. When you become passive and relaxed physically and mentally, your brain frequency slows down. 
This happens when you go to sleep at night. It happens when you are relaxed and daydreaming. But if you haven't learned to stay at alpha when you activate your mind, then your brain frequency will increase whenever you become mentally or physically active. After you learn to enter the alpha level, then you can learn to activate your mind and remain at the alpha level by practicing a series of mental calisthenics that Jose Silva developed during his 22 years of scientific research. He was the first scientist to discover how to do this, and his groundbreaking research was published in the medical journal Neuropsychology in 1972. All of our techniques are designed to work at the alpha level. However, once you learn, you will not need to go through the centering exercise to get to alpha. You won't even need to close your eyes. You will be able to have alpha functioning with your eyes open as long as you don't focus and concentrate your eyesight on anything. We'll explain that a little later in this book. Do not skip any steps. The first time you take this training, please be sure to do everything in the order that we present it. First, you need to find the alpha level by using the Silva centering exercise and following the instructions. Then, there are five mental projection exercises that are the key to learning this new subjective communication system. Please do them in the order that we present them, because each one builds on what you learned in the previous ones. We will do the Silva centering exercise before each of the mental projection conditioning cycles in order to deepen your level even more. Here is the order. 1. Silva centering exercise, projection to home. 2. Silva centering exercise, projection into inanimate matter kingdom. 3. Silva Centering Exercise, Projection into Plant Life Kingdom. 4. Silva Centering Exercise, Projection into Animate Matter Kingdom. And finally, 5. Silva Centering Exercise, Projection into Human Kingdom. Now, here is co-author Ed Burned Jr., a longtime Silva instructor who worked with Jose Silva at his world headquarters in Laredo for 17 years to guide you through your first centering exercise. If you want to know exactly what is included in the Silva centering exercise, you can listen to it with your eyes open first, at the beta level. When you do this centering exercise, assume a comfortable position. A sitting position is preferred, but the most important thing is to make sure that you are comfortable. Let your body do what it wants to do. If you are uncomfortable, you will not relax as much and will not get as much benefit from the exercise. Avoid distractions, such as loud outside noises. Turn off your cell phone. Remember that if at any time you feel uncomfortable, readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally repeat the word, Relax, and you will relax physically and mentally. Now, here is Ed. It's very simple to learn to function at your center. We're going to associate numbers with different states. Number three, with physical relaxation. So anytime you mentally repeat and visualize number three, you can relax your body. Number two, with mental relaxation. Anytime you mentally repeat and visualize number two, you can relax your mind. And that'll take you right to alpha. So we'll associate number one with being at alpha. So anytime you want to use the three, two, one, you'll do it three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. Relax your body, relax your mind. You'll be at alpha. It's just that quick to get to alpha. And as you practice, you'll learn to get there without even using the ritual. For now, we use the ritual. So I'll ask you to mentally repeat and visualize the number three several times and relax your body and we'll help you. We'll go down the body from head to feet and back up from feet to the uh, shoulders. And we'll say something like this. We'll say, concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation, circulation of blood, of course. So imagine that. You can kind of make it happen. And we'll say, release and completely relax. 
all tensions and ligament pressure from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Relax completely. Don't hold anything back. Just let it go. Then we'll do the same with the forehead. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead. We'll go down to the eyelids, the tissues that surround your eyes, your face. It's the skin that covers your cheeks. The outer portion of your throat, the skin covering your throat area. We'll even relax within the throat area. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest. Then it'll ask you to relax within the chest area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic and healthy manner. Same with the abdomen. Your desire will make it happen. Everything in your body will start functioning normally, will move towards normal, healthy functioning as you practice this exercise. Your thighs, and your knees, your calves, your feet, your toes, the soles of your feet, the heels of your feet. And we'll come back up the body and kind of desensitize it. We'll say cause your feet to feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, thighs, waist, shoulders, arms, and hands. And we'll reinforce this as level three for physical relaxation. Then level two for mental relaxation. How do you do that? Visualize tranquil and passive scenes. Day at the beach. Imagine being at the beach, looking out at the ocean. A day out fishing. Drop your line in. Pretend you're fishing. A walk through the woods. Get totally involved. Notice the trees, the flowers. Feel the breeze. Look at the clouds. Listen to the birds. And we'll reinforce. That's level two. Where noises will not distract you. Noises will help you to relax more and more. And then... Take a deep breath while exhaling. Mentally repeat and visualize number one several times. You're now at level one where you can function at your center. Ten cycles alpha, the center of the brain frequency range where you can function there with conscious awareness. One of the things that we'll do after we get to level one, I'll ask you to project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation. This can be any place you want to go. Project yourself there. Take yourself there mentally. I will say to you, when you next hear my voice, one hour of time will have elapsed at this level of mind. Now, that's not going to be one hour of time on the clock. Because remember, mentally, there's no time or space. So we'll get the effect of having been at this ideal place of relaxation for an hour when it's really nowhere near that long. It's not even a minute, not even a minute. Then we'll repeat a number of statements, some positive beneficial statements. Positive thoughts bring me benefits and advantages I desire. My increasing mental faculties are for serving humanity better. That includes you, by the way. You're, you're part of it. <laughs> you're, you're part of humanity, so help yourself and others. We'll have rapport statements. You'll continue to listen to my voice, follow the instructions at this level of the mind and any other level, meaning the instructions apply even at the outer level of consciousness. Then we'll do post-effects. You may use these levels to help yourself, your loved ones, anyone who needs help, physically and mentally. You'll never use them to harm anybody. You can't anyway. They can't be used to harm. You cannot project your mind at a distance and harm anybody. You know, you can't call somebody up on the telephone and give them a black eye. Doesn't happen. <laughs> it happen. You have to have physical force to do that. And then we'll do the bring out. We'll count from one to five and out in perfect health, feeling like you've had a just exactly the right amount of sleep. This one exercise is worth half a million dollars. That's what it cost Jose Silva to develop it over a 22-year period. Are you ready for your half million dollars? Ready for me to give you something that's worth half a million dollars? We'll do it right now, if you like. So, stretch. All right. Are there any questions? If there are any questions, let me know. And then, sit down, make yourself comfortable, find a comfortable position, and we'll get started with the Silva Centering Exercise. This recording is to be used with eyes closed so that you can shut out distractions and relax completely. So do not play it when you are driving or when you are performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the alpha sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to your center, the alpha rhythm. Now prepare for the Silva centering exercise by finding a comfortable position.
we will start this exercise with the three-to-one method. Take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number three three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead, the skin that covers your forehead. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyelids and the tissue surrounding your eyes. It will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your face, the skin covering your cheeks. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate on the outer portion of your throat, the skin covering your throat area. It will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth, caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures in this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate within the throat area and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your shoulders. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering this part of your body. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your shoulders in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your chest. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your chest.
relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your chest in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the chest area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your abdomen. Feel the clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your abdomen. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your abdomen in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the abdominal area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your thighs. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your thighs. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your thighs in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Sense the vibrations at the bones within the thighs. By now, these vibrations should be easily detectable. Concentrate on your knees. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering the knees. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your knees in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your calves. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering your calves. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place these parts of your body in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on your toes. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the soles of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the heels of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Now cause your feet to feel as though they do not belong to your body. Feel your feet as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, and knees feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, waist, shoulders, 
arms, and hands feel as though they do not belong to your body. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now, and more so every time you practice. To enter the mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two several times. And you are at level two, a deeper level than three. Level two is for mental relaxation where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To help you learn to relax mentally at level two, I'm going to call your attention to different passive scenes. Visualizing any scene that makes you tranquil and passive will help you relax mentally. Your being at the beach on a nice summer day may be a tranquil and passive scene for you. A day out fishing may be a tranquil and passive scene for you. A tranquil and passive scene for you may be a walk through the woods on a beautiful summer day when the breeze is just right, where there are tall shade trees, beautiful flowers, very blue sky, an occasional white cloud, birds singing in the distance, even squirrels playing on the tree limbs. Hear birds singing in the distance. This is Mental Relaxation Level 2, where noises will not distract you. To enhance mental relaxation at Level 2, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number 1 several times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To enter deeper, healthier levels of mind, practice with the countdown deepening exercises. To deepen, count downward from 25 to 1, or from 50 to 1, or from 100 to 1. When you reach the count of one, you will have reached a deeper, healthier level of mind deeper than before. You will always have full control and complete dominion over your faculties and senses at all levels of the mind, including the outer conscious level. The best time to practice the countdown deepening exercises is in the morning when you wake up. Remain in bed at least five minutes practicing the countdown deepening exercises. The second best time to practice is at night when you are ready to retire. The third best time to practice is at noon after lunch. Five minutes of practice is good. Ten minutes is very good. And fifteen minutes is excellent. To practice once a day is good. Two times a day is very good. And three times a day is excellent. If you have a health problem, practice for 15 minutes, three times a day.
to come out of any level of the mind, count to yourself mentally from one to five, and tell yourself that at the count of five you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Then proceed to count slowly from one to two, then to three, and at the count of three, mentally remind yourself that at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Proceed to count slowly to four, then to five, at the count of five, and with your eyes open, mentally tell yourself, I am wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. And this is so. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten. Nine. Feel going deeper. Eight. Seven. Six. Deeper and deeper. Five. Four. Three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You may enter a deeper, healthier level of mind by simply relaxing your eyelids. Relax your eyelids. Feel how relaxed they are. Allow this feeling of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body, all the way down to your toes. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from one to three. At that moment, you will project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation. I will then stop talking to you, and when you next hear my voice, one hour of time will have elapsed at this level of mind. My voice will not startle you. You will take a deep breath, relax, and go deeper. One. Two. Three. Project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation until you hear my voice again. Relax. Relax. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax and go deeper. You will continue to listen to my voice. You will continue to follow the instructions at this level of the mind and any other level, including the outer conscious level. This is for your benefit. You desire it, and it is so. Whenever you mentally or verbally mention the word relax, all unnecessary movements and activities of your body, brain, and mind will cease immediately, and you will become completely passive and relaxed, physically and mentally. I may bring you out of this level, or a deeper level than this, by counting to you from one to five. At the count of five, your eyes will open, you will be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health. The difference between genius mentality and lay mentality is that geniuses use more of their minds and use them in a special manner. You will learn to use more of your mind and to use it in a special manner. The following are beneficial statements that you may occasionally repeat while at these levels of the mind. Repeat mentally after me. My increasing mental faculties are for serving humanity better. Every day, 
in every way, I am getting better, better, and better. Positive thoughts bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I have full control and complete dominion over my sensing faculties at this level of the mind and any other level including the outer conscious level. And this is so. Effective sensory projection statements for success. I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to any point or place on this planet so as to be aware of any actions taking place, if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to any point or place on any planet within the solar system, any solar system within the galaxy, and any galaxy within the universe so as to be aware of any actions taking place, if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to the different matter kingdoms, the inanimate matter kingdom, any of its levels and depths. The animate matter kingdom with reproductive intelligence, plant life and animal life, any of its levels and depths. And the animate matter kingdom with reproductive intelligence and an awareness of existence. The human body and mind kingdom, any of its levels and depths. I will learn to detect abnormalities whenever such abnormalities exist within any kingdom any level and any depth, if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to apply corrective measures and to bring back to normalcy any abnormality found within any kingdom, any level, and any depth, if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. Negative thoughts and negative suggestions have no influence over me at any level of the mind. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. 
You will have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of mind. One. Two. Coming out slowly now. Three. At the count of five, you'll open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy, wonderful sleep. Four. Five. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. This concludes the Silva Centering Exercise for Jose Silva's Ultramind ESP System. Thank you. Chapter 3. Decision-Making Techniques In the next five chapters, you will practice the five mental projection exercises that will introduce you to the subjective dimension. Meanwhile, please continue to practice your alpha exercise as we instructed you to in Chapter 2 to make sure that you will be at the alpha level when you practice the mental projection exercises. When you feel relaxed physically and mentally, you are doing it correctly. When you feel relaxed and energized at the completion of your alpha exercises, you know you are entering the alpha level. You cannot feel alpha. But relaxation creates the environment where your brain will produce the alpha brainwave that we desire. To help you learn to actually use the alpha level, I will give you some techniques that you can use at alpha to help you in your business career, as well as in your personal life. You can use these techniques immediately, even while you are doing the five mental projection drills to develop your ESP. It's easy to measure the results you achieve by using the alpha level. You take action and notice the results that you get. Jose Silva often emphasized the importance of taking action. The whole course is based on taking action. That's why we urge students in class not to just sit passively as their instructor reads the conditioning cycle to them, but to actually follow the instructions and do what the instructor tells them to do. That's why doing it on your own can be more valuable to you. As a business person, you recognize just as Jose Silva did, the importance of actually doing what is necessary to ensure that you get the results you want. You can remain relaxed so that you stay in the alpha level. Also, follow the simple instructions about how to use your mind. Correct Attitude Successful businesses provide products and services that have value to people. Henry Ford put a car in every garage. Bill Gates helped find a way to put a computer in every home. Steve Jobs took it even further and put a computer in everybody's hand. As consumers, we're happy to give money to people who provide us with benefits and advantages that we desire. This concept extends beyond life here on planet Earth. If you want to obtain guidance and help from higher intelligence, which you will learn to do in Chapter 6, you need to do what higher intelligence sent us here to do which is to solve problems and improve living conditions here on Earth. It turns out that the golden rule is good business. To help us do our best, Jose Silva created the Laws of Programming. The Laws of Programming Before I give you the specific problem-solving techniques that you can use at the powerful alpha level, I need to advise you that this level is not to be used to cheat other people and take advantage of them. Jose Silva always told us that we should not gain at somebody else's loss. We should gain while helping the other person to also gain. To guide us in doing that, he included five laws of programming in the Ultramind ESP system. Laws are fixed, laid down. They are not optional. Laws don't break. If you jump off the roof, the law of gravity won't break, but you will. If you're not achieving the success you feel you should be achieving, then review the laws of programming and make sure you are complying with them. Here they are. 1. Do to others only what you like to have others do to you. 2. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. 3. 
The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. 4. The solution must help at least two or more persons. And 5. The solution must be within the area of possibility. Clemen Mihalich, the business owner you met in Chapter 1, had this to say about the value of the laws of programming in an email he sent to us in January 2008. He wrote, Do you remember when you told me, I am not the only one who is programming for business? Most businesses want more business, but not all of them pay as much attention to whether they are giving their customers as much value as possible. Ever since you told me that, I have kept in mind the five laws of programming, and I must tell you that the laws of programming are all you need in the beta world. From the time I took the old course many years ago, I have programmed a lot to successfully run my business, but nothing works better than the five laws of programming, so I am happy that Jose Silva decided to include them in the Ultramind ESP system. Be honest and do good work for others, and you will profit. It simply works. More information at Alpha. As you know, the 10 CPS Alpha frequency is at the center of the normal brainwave frequency range, which runs from 0 0.5 CPS, delta, to 20 CPS, beta. It's located at the midbrain area, the center of the brain. The center is the ideal place to be in order to access as much information as possible from all parts of the brain. That's one reason that the alpha level is the ideal level for analyzing problems and using your lifetime of experience to find the best solution. Here's an example from our own business. One of our affiliates had built a website to sell the Silva Ultramind ESP System Complete Home Seminar. Sales were good, but we were getting too many returns. We entered the alpha level and mentally scanned the website, and immediately were attracted to the main headline, which read, Develop ESP in two days, guaranteed, or your money back. We had been using that headline very successfully for our two-day seminars, and that was where the affiliate had seen it. It was fine for a two-day seminar, but not so good for a home study course. Very few people will sit down and listen to 17 hours of recordings in two days. One of the advantages of the home seminar is that you can take it at your convenience, at your own pace. We suggested that he change the headline to read, Develop ESP in as little as two weeks, guaranteed, or your money back. Once we changed the headline to give people a more realistic idea of how long it would take to get results, returns dropped dramatically. This truly conforms to the laws of programming. It was the best thing for everybody concerned. More people learned and benefited from the Ultramind ESP system. They learned techniques to help their loved ones and anyone who needed help. And we made more sales and earned more money. It's a false choice to think that when one person gains, somebody else has to lose. Jose Silva said that we should gain while helping the other person to gain as well. You can use your mind to detect where the objective reality fails to conform to the subjective blueprint of perfection, so that you can then correct the abnormality and everybody gains. Help for Decision Making Your success in business may be determined by the decisions you make. Your judgment is being tested. This is not the first time. You have made many good decisions. You have been right more often than wrong in the past, and that is probably why you are where you are in your business career. Now you have ways to use more of your mind, more of your decision-making capabilities, more of your latent genius ability to be right even more often. There is more information available at Alpha than at Beta, and Alpha is the strongest part of the brain. So it is the ideal level to use to analyze problems and decide how to correct them. In addition to that, here are a couple of very powerful decision-making techniques. 1. You can use Jose Silva's elimination technique, which we'll talk about in a moment, to help you make the right choice when you have several options. And 2. You can use Silva Ultramind's mental video technique, which you will learn in Chapter 6, to help you choose the best option and also give you guidance when you don't know what to do next. 
the elimination technique. With the elimination technique, also called the alternate choice technique, you compare two of the available choices at a time. It is much like a single elimination sports tournament, where teams play each other and the loser is eliminated while the winner moves on. Let's say you have an opportunity to make a sizable sale to a new company. You have three star salespeople to choose from. You must select the one best for this critical sale. You review the matter objectively. Then you go to your center, the alpha level. At your center, you pose the question, who is better, salesperson A or salesperson B? Then clear your mind for a moment by thinking of something entirely different. You want to disconnect from the asking mode and reconnect in the receiving mode. When you return to the question to get the answer, your first impression is usually the strongest and the correct one. After you have eliminated one of the two choices, compare the one you chose with another option. If you feel that salesperson A is the better one for the job, then your next step is to compare salesperson A with salesperson C. Once again, choose one and eliminate the other. You can use this method for small decisions at first. See how clairvoyant decisions work for you in using this person instead of that person, in using this color instead of that color, this equipment instead of that equipment. As your skill improves and your confidence grows, you can graduate to the important situations that can bring you big savings in time. For instance, you can be doing some routine tasks where a certain amount of good judgment is needed. You have done these tasks satisfactorily many times before the Silva training, but now, with the Silva techniques, you can do them even better. You can use the elimination method at Alpha in the following. Pricing products. Setting manufacturing runs. Determining discounts to be allowed. Evaluating credit limits. Establishing budgets. Hiring the best employees. Ordering raw materials. Establishing inventory levels. Effective advertising and marketing. Negotiating. And finally, crisis management. The result will be a fine-tuning of your judgment. Routine matters, instead of being handled in a routine way, will enjoy the same superior touch as more important matters. Furthermore, routine matters occur more frequently, so the small increment of advantage you gain adds up rapidly. You begin to see it in the profit and loss statement. This technique can yield the following. Better words and phrases in a letter or ad. The proper order of procedure in written material or activities. The diplomatic approach in conversation. The right area for a sales test and the best person to do a job. Suppose you're comparing two suppliers, one who offers compensation if you have less than 99% uptime versus another supplier who guarantees 98% uptime. Would you pay 50% more to gain an extra 1% uptime? It doesn't sound like a very good deal from a left-brain perspective. During your analysis at Alpha, you might look at it from another angle and realize that you will have twice as much downtime before receiving compensation if you opt for the 98% uptime guarantee. Compare prices on that basis, and you may decide that paying 50% more for a guarantee of 100% more uptime might be the better deal. There are many other situations where the alpha level can help you make the best decisions. For example, you're making a major purchase and several suppliers are competing. Compare them on these bases. 1. Innovative new company versus trusted established company. 2. Lower purchase price versus lower price for service contract. 3. Cost of additional features versus savings and increased productivity. 4. Hiring the best employees. 5. Establishing budgets. 6. Ordering raw materials. 7. Setting manufacturing runs. 8. Establishing inventory levels. 9. Setting prices. 10. Determining discounts to be allowed. 11. Evaluating credit limits. 12. Effective advertising and marketing. 13. Negotiating. And 14. Crisis management. 
Chris Downs, a retired British police officer who wrote the foreword to this book, used the alternate choice technique to make an important buying decision in his personal life. He told us, I was buying a new car and had narrowed it down to one of two choices. I came up with my own variation of the alternate choice technique. I visualized both cars and imagined them both being driven inside a garage and the door closing. Then I cleared my mind by thinking of something else I needed to do, and when I came back for the answer, I imagined the garage door opening and one of the cars coming out. But I didn't call and order it right away. Within 30 minutes, one of the car dealerships telephoned me to say there was a problem on the construction line and the car would not be available until sometime in September. That confirmed what the technique had indicated about which one to buy. I am sure it helps that I have been practicing the distant healing that we learned in the last part of the Silva Ultramind ESP system and also using the mental video for guidance from higher intelligence. How to Develop Your ESP and use it reliably. These days it seems as if there are apps for everything. Tap a button or an icon, and somebody will bring you a pizza, or give you a ride, or play your favorite music, or show you the latest movie, or even read you a book. But there are some things that only a human being can do. Only a human being can fall in love. A computer app can't do it for you. Intuition is also something that only a living being can do. For centuries, people have tried to understand and explain ESP, psychic ability. Some people thought it was some kind of mysterious extra sense that only a few lucky people had. That's why they called it extrasensory perception. In a way, they were right, because, as we have seen, only a few lucky people, about 10% of humanity, have learned how to use this ability. There were many other ideas about psychic ability. Jose Silva sorted through all of them during his 22 years of scientific research. He put all of them to the test. He discovered that ESP is not an extra sense, but a prior sense, something we are all born with, but which only one person in ten is able to use after they mature. Mr. Silva's greatest discovery is how easy it is for all of us, everybody to develop this ability. He discovered that it's not something extra, and we don't have to sit and hope that it comes to us. That is why he changed the meaning of ESP to effective sensory projection. You can project your mind to detect any information anywhere it exists. We're going to do something now that we have never done before. We will open the vault and show you exactly what Jose Silva discovered about how to develop your own natural, God-given intuition within one week or less. You've already learned the first step, how to enter and function at the alpha brainwave level. Now, I will show you the second step, how to learn to decide and understand the subjective, or mental, or psychic, information, just as your smartphone decodes digital information. How Psychic Ability Works Effective sensory projection is a lot like your smartphone. When we talk on the phone, you hear my voice, and I hear your voice. But you don't hear my actual voice, and I don't hear your actual voice. My phone converts my voice into computer code, and then transmits it through an electronic signal to your phone. Your phone decodes the data, sent to it by my phone, and converts it back into sound waves that resemble my voice. We each hear a representation of the other person's voice created by our phone from the information that the other phone sent. The same thing happens when you use video messaging. What you see on your screen is an image of the person that your smartphone reconstructed from the digital code that was sent from their phone. You see a reproduction of my face that is created by the app on your phone, and I see a likeness of your face that the app on my phone creates. ESP works the same way. Your mind detects psychic information, and apps in your brain will decode the information and convert it to a physical representation. Your brain's clairvoyant app will give you a mental picture. Your clairaudient app will provide a reproduction of sounds, and your clairsentient app affects your physical body directly. 
Nobody else is doing it. Your mind detects the subjective or psychic information, and your brain decodes it and converts it to a form that you can understand. But there is one big difference between a smartphone and your brain. Using your smartphone to communicate and send information back and forth requires that both parties participate. Not so with your mind. You can project your mind to any location and detect information if it is needed to solve a problem and improve living conditions on the planet. If another person is at the alpha level and is projecting a mental image to you, then it's easy for you to detect it while at your alpha level. If they are not projecting a mental image to you, then you may need to create an image with your own mind. It might not happen automatically. You might have to take action mentally and create a mental image, or perhaps several mental images, until you find the correct one. You can also imagine what someone would say to you, and what they might feel like. This is how you can detect accurate information when nobody is transmitting it to you. Take the first step to develop your ESP. Now, we'll take the first step in developing your own natural God-given intuition, which you can do in just a few days' time. In order for you to become familiar with the subjective or mental dimension, we want you to enter the alpha level and go over what you already know, what you have experienced, to review what you have impressed on your brain neurons with your objective or physical senses. What are you already familiar with in your everyday life? You are familiar with your own home. When you walk into a room, you know immediately which room it is and how it is furnished, because you have been there before. There are many distinguishing details that you can refer to so that you know whether you are in the living room or the dining room or the master bedroom. These details are called points of reference. Points of reference. Points of reference are details that help you to recognize and understand something. That's what you do whenever you learn something new, like learning to read a balance sheet. In order to recognize and understand a balance sheet, you first need to know what assets, liabilities, and equity accounts are. Then, when you see them laid out in a certain way, you will know that you are looking at a balance sheet. The more experience you have with balance sheets, the faster you will be able to use one to determine the financial health of a business. A balance sheet lays out the ending balances in a company's asset, liability, and equity accounts as of the date stated on the report. The most common use of the balance sheet is as the basis for ratio analysis to determine the liquidity of a business. Liquidity is essentially the ability to pay one's debts in a timely manner. The balance sheet is a key element of the financial statements. Other documents are the income statement and the statement of cash flows. A statement of retained earnings may sometimes be attached. The format of the balance sheet is not mandated by accounting standards, but rather by customary usage. The two most common formats are the vertical balance sheet, where all line items are presented down the left side of the page, and the horizontal balance sheet, where asset line items are listed down the first column, and liabilities and equity line items are listed in a later column. The vertical format is easier to use when information is being presented for multiple periods. All of these details can be seen as points of reference for understanding a balance sheet. In order to learn to function in the subjective dimension, just as easily as you function now in the objective physical dimension, you need to start collecting experiences and finding distinguishing details in the subjective dimension that you can refer to. Here is what Jose Silva discovered about how to do that. Beginning to explore the subjective dimension. First, we'll take your objective experiences to the subjective alpha level, and we'll review them at that level. We will go over and review the experiences and memories that you have accumulated in your brain. Then, we will ask you to do something with your mind that you cannot do with your body. In this way, you will establish subjective impressions with your mind. You can do that when you are at 10 cycles per second alpha. We call this mental projection. For instance, you know what your living room looks like physically, so in order to experience it mentally, you will project your mind into the material that the wall is made of. 
You cannot do this physically, so you must use your mind to do it mentally. In this next exercise, here is what we want you to do. The first thing you will do in this next conditioning cycle is to project yourself mentally to be standing in front of your home, standing about 30 feet or 10 meters from it. Then, Ed will guide you to study the front of your home, studying details and noticing colors. Then, you will mentally enter your home and go into your living room and stand at the center, facing the south wall. To help you determine which is the south wall, when you are facing south, the sunrise is on your left, and the sunset is on your right. Then you will study the wall as you did the front of your home, and study everything that attracts you, pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. After reviewing your memories while at the alpha level, Ed will ask you to do something you have never done before, to project yourself mentally into your living room south wall. Use your imagination for this. He will guide you to test for light, temperature, odor, and solidity of material. Then you will come back out of the wall and examine some objects, including a chair and some common foods. Time in the subjective dimension. If you're wondering why we use the south wall, it's because when we face south mentally, we can move forwards and backwards in time. It doesn't matter which way you face physically. It's as if you have moved out of the physical dimension into the mental dimension, and now you are looking back mentally at the physical dimension. In the physical dimension, the past is behind you. The present is where you are, and the future is in front of you. In the mental dimension, the past is to your right, the present is directly in front of you, and the future is to your left. This exercise is about 40 minutes long. Now, here is Ed to guide you through it. This is the Projection to Home exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind ESP system. Now prepare for the projection to home exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the 3 to 1 method. Take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number 3 three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level 3, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest, externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area, externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now, and more so every time you practice. 
to enter mental relaxation level two. Take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. And you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I'm going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten, nine, feel going deeper. Eight, seven, six, deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead and the future is to your left. We will now impress new information for your benefit, the mental screen. To locate your mental screen, begin with your eyes closed, turn slightly upward from the horizontal plane of sight at an angle of approximately 20 degrees. The area that you perceive with your mind is your mental screen. Without using your eyelids as screens, sense your mental screen to be out away from your body. To improve the use of your mental screen, project images or mental pictures onto the screen, especially images having color. Concentrate on mentally sensing and visualizing true color. 
We will now program effective sensory projection for your success. We will program information through the use of mental projection. We will establish subjective points of reference at the imaginative dimension, the subjective dimension at different levels and depths. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that time, you will imagine yourself to be standing about 30 feet in front of your home. You will study the outer appearance of your home, scanning the scene. You will start at the top left of the scene and go from left to right, just as you do when reading a page of a book. You will then go to the left side of the scene again, but a little lower than before, and again go from left to right. You will continue going a little lower each time until you reach the ground level. I will now count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers so that you may imagine projecting yourself to the front of your home. One, two, three. Project yourself mentally to the front of your home, standing about 30 feet from it. Begin scanning the scene at the upper left-hand corner, going slowly from left to right. Lower each time until you reach the ground level. You will go slowly and stop to study anything that attracts your intelligence while scanning, such as the roof, windows, window frames, doors. Study anything that attracts you. Begin by studying the roof of your home. What material is it made of? What color is it? Continue studying everything that attracts you until you reach the ground level. Concentrate on colors. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Study colors. Scan the ground level. Now focus your attention on the front door and concentrate on the doorknob or handle. Mentally move close to the door, close enough to touch the door handle. Expect the door to appear to increase in size as you get closer. Mentally touch the doorknob or handle, open the door, and mentally enter your home, closing the door behind you. Mentally walk toward your living room. Once you have entered your living room, stand at the center, facing the south wall. You have been here before. You have been here during daylight hours, and you have been here during nighttime, with the lights turned on and with the lights turned off. I am going to count from one to three. At the count of three, it will be daytime. One, two, three. It is now daytime. You are standing at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know how much light enters the room during the day, and you recognize what is in front of you. What is behind you? You know what is to your left. 
and what is to your right. At the count of three, we will change the scene to nighttime with the house lights turned on. One, two, three. The scene has changed to nighttime, and you are still standing in the middle of your living room facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know what is in front of you, what is behind you, what is to your left, and what is to your right. At the count of three, the lights will go out. One, two, three. The lights are out, and you are standing in darkness facing the south wall. Although the living room looks dark, you still know what is in front of you, what is behind you, what is to your left, and what is to your right. At this time, concentrate on the wall before you, the south wall. You can sense it being a certain distance away, and you know what is on this wall. You also know the color of this wall. Use your memory, your knowing, your sensing to make a study of your south wall. Scan this wall as you did the front of your home, beginning at the upper left corner and going from left to right, a little lower each time until you reach the floor level. Study everything that attracts you, pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Study colors. Take your time. Now mentally walk toward the south wall and stand close enough to touch it. At the count of three, you will objectively raise your hand to touch the wall. One, two, three. Objectively stretch out your arm, raise your hand, and with the palm of your hand, touch the wall. Use your imagination to sense the wall as being smooth or rough, as cold or warm, whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. Subjectively observe and study the wall from a few inches away. Study the material, the color, whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, you will imagine projecting yourself subjectively within the wall. One, two, three. You are now within the wall. You may return your hand to rest on your lap. At this time, we will conduct four tests subjectively. First, we will test for light, intensity, and color. Our second test is for temperature. The third test is for odor. And the fourth, for solidity of material by reflected sound. At the count of three, we will test for light, its intensity and color. One, two, three. Subjectively test for light, intensity, and color. How much light do you sense?
What color do you sense? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for temperature. One, two, three. Subjectively test for temperature. Is there a difference in temperature between the inside and the outside of the wall? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for odor. One, two, three. Subjectively test for odor. Is there a difference in odor between the inside and the outside of the wall? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, test for solidity of material by knocking on the inside of the wall. One, two, three. Objectively form a fist and knock on the inside of the subjective wall. Objectively go through the motions as you do when you knock on a door. What kind of sound would you expect to hear reflected back to you? How solid would you judge the material to be? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, you will come out of the wall and be just a few inches away from it. One, two, three. You are out of the wall just a few inches away. Now at the count of three, you will be at arm's length. One, two, three. You are now at arm's length. At the count of three, you will be at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. One, two, three. You are now at the center of your living room, facing the south wall. You know the color of your south wall. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to black. One, two, three. The color of the wall is now black. You can get a true black color by imagining a painter with a can of black paint and a brush in his hand, painting the wall black and about to finish painting it. Your south wall is now all black. At the count of three, it will be red. One, two, three. It is now red. To get a true red color, again, imagine a painter about to finish painting it red. At the count of three, the wall will be green. One, two, three. The wall is now green. Imagine it green. At the count of three, the wall will be blue. One, two, three. The wall is now blue. Imagine it blue. At the count of three, the wall will be violet. One, two, three. The wall is now violet. Imagine it violet. We will now change the color back to blue, back to green, back to red, back to black. We will now mentally examine a chair, selecting any chair we wish. Mentally push it against the black wall. 
from your position in the center of the living room facing the south wall, mentally lift the chair about 20 degrees above the horizontal plane of sight in the area of your mental screen. We will examine the chair, studying its material, the upholstery, if it is upholstered, and how it is attached to the chair, and the color of the chair. Now mentally turn the chair toward your left. Now away from you. Now toward the right. Now facing you. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to its actual color. One, two, three. The wall is now its actual color. Again, study the chair. How does it stand out against this background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to red. One, two, three. The wall is now red. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a red background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to green. One, two, three. Three. The wall is now green. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a green background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the color of the wall will change to blue. One, two, three. The wall is now blue. Study the chair. How does it stand out against a blue background? Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. The color of the wall will now change back to green, back to red, back to the natural color, back to black. At the count of three, the chair will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The chair has disappeared from the scene. The wall is now black. At the count of three, we will mentally bring into the scene a watermelon. It will be up against the wall at the height where we had the chair. One, two, three. Study this watermelon. Use your knowing, your memory, your sensing. Above all, use your imagination to study the watermelon. Observe how the green stands out against the black background. At the count of three, the watermelon will be cut in half. One, two, three. The watermelon is now cut in half. And you can visualize how the red portion of the watermelon, lined with black seeds, stands out against the white inner rind and the green of the outside. As you mentally bring the two halves slowly toward you, notice how they appear to increase in size. Examine the various colors, the red, the white, the black, and the green from only a few inches away. Now imagine the odor and taste of watermelon.
Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the watermelon will be near the wall. One, two, three. The watermelon is now near the wall. At the count of three, the two halves will come together. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the watermelon will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The watermelon has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, a lemon will appear at the same level near the wall. One, two, three. A lemon appears in a fluorescent yellow color that stands out against the black wall. Bring the lemon closer to you, noticing how it appears to increase in size as it approaches. Stop the approaching lemon when it's only a few inches away and examine its color. Now imagine the odor and taste of a lemon. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the lemon will be near the wall. One, two, three. The lemon is now near the wall, a little higher than the horizontal level of sight. At the count of three, the lemon will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The lemon has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, an orange will appear. One, two, three. An orange has appeared on the scene. Observe the color at a distance. Now bring the orange closer and again observe the color. Now imagine the odor and taste of an orange. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the orange will be near the wall. One, two, three. The orange is now near the wall. At the count of three, the orange will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. Three. The orange has disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, three bananas will appear. One, two, three. Three bananas have appeared. Study the color from far and near. Now imagine the odor and taste of bananas. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the bananas will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the bananas will disappear from the scene. One, Two, three. The bananas have disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, three carrots will appear. One, two, three. Three carrots have appeared. Study the color from far and near. Now imagine the odor and taste of carrots. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the carrots will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the carrots will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The carrots have disappeared from the scene. At the count of three, a fresh and crisp head of lettuce will appear. One, two, three. A head of lettuce has appeared. 
study the color from far, Now bring it closer and study the color from a distance of about 12 inches. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as a point of reference in the future. At the count of three, the head of lettuce will be near the wall. One, two, three. Now at the count of three, the head of lettuce will disappear from the scene. One, two, three. The head of lettuce has disappeared from the scene. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as points of reference in the future. It is now an accomplished fact that subjective points of reference have been established at the imaginative dimension, at the subjective dimension, at different levels and different depths. To function at these levels and to use these points of reference, all you need is to have a sincere desire to solve problems. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind and at these points of reference, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind or these points of reference to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind, nor will you be able to use these points of reference. You will always use these levels of the mind and these points of reference in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I'm going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You will have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache. No ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears. No ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of mind. One. Two. Coming out slowly now. Three. At the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy, wonderful sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. This concludes the Projection to Home exercise for Jose Silva's Ultramind ESP system.